Divine Truth Assistance Group. These group assistance sessions are about putting principles of divine truth into action. This discussion is part of the 2014 Australia Group 2 series. Jesus Gives Personal Truth to Angela and Robert Griffiths, filmed on the 29th of July 2014 in Monterey, New South Wales, Australia. Okay, well, um, the reason why I've invited Ange in particular here tonight, today is because it was a proviso of her coming to the group, actually, because of some of the unloving things that went on during the booking process. I, rather than go through the entire thing with the audience, what I would like to do is raise two issues. Um, the first issue was right at the beginning of the booking process, there was an issue where um, we only had a limit of about 100 people and you were 102 and 103 being booked in. And do you remember what you said to Mary in that, at that time? So you were, you, were, you were number 102 yeah. and 103? I was in real upset because... Because you'd missed out? My email had not returned to me and Mary hadn't got it. And yeah. um, all I know, the feeling was, oh, Mary, you've got to change it. You know, this can't happen. I've got to be there. Yeah. And, and to be honest but with you, you ne have not given any thought to how unloving that actual, actually was. Right? Basically, what you were asking Mary to do yeah. is you were asking Mary to kick somebody else out in order to put you in. Yeah. I didn't think of that. No, but that's what you were asking. Mm. And that is an indication of how superior you feel mm. yourself to be yeah. compared to other people who were there. Yeah. Yeah. So this is a big issue yeah. for you. Yeah. So it's an issue of where you believe yeah. that you are superior to others and you yeah. deserve special attention. You deserve special yeah. consideration. Yeah. And, uh, and what happened was Mary tried to correct that with you and you continued to then blame Mary for her not receiving your emails. And you and you'd had no consideration of that either. In other words, you were trying to instead of just feeling that you'd missed out, mm. which is the emotion you were attempting to, you know, you're mm. attempting to avoid. You instead wanted to even blame the person who was organising it, who had already told you that you were giving her an unloving request, <laughs> and you were still and you still went on going further with it. Like mm. so, so not only did you get to do the original th request, which was unloving, which was to request it two people who are already here miss out so that you can get in. But then you continued the unloving thing by then saying, well, the whole reason why this happened is because you, to Mary, you said you didn't send me the emails or there's something wrong with the way that you sent the emails and I didn't get them and all those kind of things. All right? This is what you did. I got the email. No, but you're saying Mary didn't get your return email, yeah. right? Yeah. which we didn't. Yeah. 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 And we've got every and we got everybody else's. Yeah. But you were implying that yeah. it was her fault. Well, I told her that I got the address wrong. That's right. But you're in, still implying yeah. that it was her fault. Yeah. Yeah. And and there's one mm. resistance. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And there's there's two more. We're going to terminate this discussion, Ange. Does that make sense? So you need to have a good think about this, like how far you want to resist this. Because Mary tried to raise the issues with you and you yeah. were in total denial of the issues even way back then. Right? Yeah. And she did that a number of times and, yeah. and if it was me on the end of the phone when yeah. she was on, you would yeah. not even be here now, yeah. to be honest. Yeah. Uh, if it was me on the phone. Yeah. You're just very fortunate that Mary was a bit more tolerant yeah. <laughs> than, than I would have been. All right? So that's the first issue. Then then we come to the second a second issue, and I'm trying to go th through them quite mm. quickly mm. so that so that and then give you some feedback about yeah. them. The second issue was you Rob was given the gift by by another person here, Dennis, yeah. to actually be a part yeah. and there's an issue even there in that you were already coming by yourself yeah but but you seem to be quite unwilling to have Rob with you. So we'll forget about that issue for a moment because it was an issue I want to raise. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and what I would like to ask you is then when both of you were coming, you decided you, decided you would like to be together right? rather than be in separate rooms. 
Now, there was no consideration given to the other people involved in the reorganisation of that at all. At all. You just decided you were going to do it, you yeah. paid the extra fund, you yeah. didn't even tell those people involved, you made no effort to yeah. see how it affected them in any way. Yeah. And there's the second issue, yeah. Mary raised that issue with yeah. you and you became resistive there again. Yeah. And again, if you were talking to me, yeah. that would have been it. Yeah. Right? So there was a number of choices that you made mm. to not be loving. Mm. And have you examined the reason why? Well, just as you said, you know, the, the special, I'm special, the entitlement, the, the, um, the arrogance, you know, that, that yeah, I feel you, is, is... To be honest, though, you don't believe you're arrogant, Ange. You don't. You believe that... I can feel it sometimes. I know you can feel it sometimes, but you don't believe it. Right. Most of the time when I'm talking to you, you believe you're right even in this discussion that's happened already, yeah. where you believe you're right, yeah. right? Yeah. And, I, and we've got like good 20 emails to prove <laughs> that yeah. you're wrong yeah. if you ever wanted to look at them, yeah. but, but you still believe you're in the right. Yeah. And this is a problem. Yeah. Now, yesterday, you remember in Mary's talk, when she yeah. talked about strengthening your will, yeah. in the second section, there was a section where she rapidly went through uh, four points, and most people probably weren't, weren't sort of th those points probably yeah. didn't stand out but hopefully by the end of the week they will yeah. and that is that the very first point that we have to start with regard to our will to love is where can you remember where um realizing that we don't <laughs> exactly Re actually the way she said it was realizing that we arrogantly already believe yes, that we're loving yes yes this yes, is the yes, state yes <laughs> this is the state you're in right yeah. Yeah. Yes, I know. I realised that. I mean, I felt that yesterday. No, you don't realise it. Well, okay. <laughs> I, <laughs> if you realised it, you'd already be doing something about it. Honestly. Yeah. Like, given that you've listened to Divine Truth for five years, mm. if you realised this really, emotionally realised it, you would already be doing something about it. So the mm. fact that you haven't done anything about it means that you don't realise it. You, what, what's going on here is mm. you're, you're in a lot of facade. Mm. Right? Yeah. And what you're, you're trying to do is you're trying to manufacture through your willpower, which is exactly yeah. the way you've been taught all of your yeah. life to do something new, yeah. is to do it with your very strong willpower. Yeah. Yeah. Discipline yourself. Right? Yeah, it. discipline yourself, go ahead and do it. Yeah. This is how you've embraced yeah. divine truth, yeah. right? And this is something you need to give up. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's, not, it's not helping yeah. you grow. <laughs> it's not helping you grow. So, so this is where my suggestion is that you start. Start at the point of seeing that you actually have this belief that you already know what love does and that you think everybody else should get onto your program. Right? Now, the reason why I raise this with you is there are a lot of women in this audience who feel exactly the same way, who actually believe that they already know what love is and that everybody else has to get onto their program. Right? And this is a major problem. And this is the major problem that stops you from progressing. Right? The second major problem that stops you from progressing is that you've been taught by your father to not accurately analyse yourself. He has given you a lot of very positive emotions mm. right, about yourself. Mm. And he has actually created in you, and we'll talk about this in a couple of days' time with regard to repentance and forgiveness relationships, mm. but he has given you this concept about yourself that you are superior to other people and therefore deserve yeah. treatment that you would not give. Yeah. In other words, there's an yeah. there's a ethics. unethical viewpoint inside of yourself that is well established emotionally. Yeah. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah. And that is causing a lot of damage to your life right yeah. now, a lot of damage to your relationship, yeah. a lot of damage to your life. And it's also causing a large amount of damage to your daughter. Yes. Right, Laurel, because, because she now believes she is superior. Yes, yes. She does. Yes. And she now treats everybody else like they are inferior mm. to her. Mm. And this is a direct result of your mm. teaching her that untruth. Yeah. Now, if you want to change this, Ange, yeah. you're going to have to start there. 
at the arrogance, yeah. the at, at the feeling of superiority yeah. that you actually have, yeah. that you try to, yeah. you, yes. you try to run away from that feeling all the yeah. time, and you try yeah. to make out you don't have it, yeah. Yeah. but you do. Yeah. And this is a big problem. And it's also the reason why you've been so resistive to truth in the last year in particular. Yeah. Because you, because you already believe you know yeah. what the truth is, and and the reality is God's not going to argue with you. Huh? No, no. <laughs> well, you haven't had an argument with God in the last year, have you? That you can recall? No. <laughs> no, God's not going to argue with you ever. Mm -hmm. God's going to say, "Well, Ange, you want to use your mm -hmm. will that direction. Mm -hmm. You can go down that direction mm -hmm. if you want. Mm -hmm. And if your relationship falls apart, well, that's part of this problem mm -hmm. of that going down that direction. Mm -hmm. And if you're you know, if the way other people view you, you know, they don't view you well, that's a result of this going down this direction. Uh, and you need to start seeing that, mm -hmm. right? The resistance to truth, which remember in Cornelius's talk, was one of the primary problems mm -hmm. that we face yeah. with yeah. regard to our fears, yeah. is causing you a lot of trouble now. Yeah. And, and this is going to continue now to cause you trouble, and it's the major reason why you're stagnant and have been yeah. for some time. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. I would like to talk to you, Rob, for a bit. And I'm sorry, this sounds more like a... It's not a discussion, it's more like me just telling you a few things. But, but I feel I need to tell you a few things. And that is, you observe and often feel the unloving behaviour that comes from Ange. You do. I know you do, because we've discussed it, right? Now, but you do very little to correct it. Very little. Yeah. Yeah. You are exhausted through the process of feeling the unloving treatment, but you don't do anything to, 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 to uh, oppose it in any way. Right? And this is a big problem for you, and it's a big problem for many of our men in the audience too, where, where they see the and feel the unloving behaviour of their partner and they do nothing at all to prevent it. And I wondered whether you'd given much thought to the emotions that you have as to why you do that. Because you know you're going to have a big fight if you do, right? Yeah, we've had a few. We had a fight on the way down. Yeah, no worries. Yeah. Um, and I do get exhausted. Yep. Um, and what do you do when you get exhausted? Uh, I give up. And what do you do then? I back off. You, you back know, off, yeah, run away, yeah. spend more time apart. Yeah. Yep. So you're yeah. never going to get closer to each other like this. No. So, so what emotion do you feel in that pl at that place? Well, I can feel some anger somewhere. You do feel I'm... anger, but before then, there's another emotion. Yeah, grief. Lots yeah. Of grief. No. Yeah. See, that's not. See, the emotion I feel from you primarily when it comes to dis when we have a discussion about you correcting Angie's unloving behaviour. Fear, fear. Is the, fear is the emotion that I feel from you most of the time. <laughs> is that not true? Yeah. You're, You're afraid sure. of her. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Yeah. How does it feel, Ange, that knowing that your husband's afraid of you, for a start? Do you think he's ever going to be close to you if he's afraid of you? No. So, so let's just talk about your fear, Rob. You justify your fear. Okay. What you do is you say internally, because I'm afraid, I sh I'm not going to do the right thing here. I'm not going to tell Anne's the truth because I'm afraid. And what are you afraid of? You're afraid of her response. Yeah. Really, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. The energy that comes at me is anger yeah. and yeah, yeah. disbelief and yeah. stuff like that. Well, actually, most of the energy that comes at you is condescension. Mm. That's the largest amount of energy that comes at you. Because when Ange believes that she's superior, she already believes you're inferior and you, wouldn't, and you don't know what you're talking about, right? So when you raise an issue, the largest emotion coming from Ange is condescension towards you. Like, you don't know what you're talking about. Right? Now, a lot of times you do know what you're talking about. <laughs> and you just ignore that. And you give all that up because you're afraid to go to the next level saying, no, hang on a sec, I do know what I'm talking about and this is off. Do you see what I'm saying? So in a way what you're doing is you're supporting the unloving behaviour and you're supporting her viewpoint of her own superiority. That's not very helpful. 
No, it's not very helpful to the situation. And if you continue to do that, Ange is going to feel more and more superior as she goes along. So actually it's going to also harm her if she, if she can choose to do it, of course. I'm not saying you're to blame for her yeah, choosing that because sure. the reality is that a lot of this comes from parents' treatment of you, right? And both mum and dad have this superior viewpoint of your family, superior viewpoint of, you know, dad has his superior viewpoint with you. Your mum has a superior viewpoint about herself. She thinks she's superior to other people. And so it's a big problem in your family, which is something that you've had, obviously, from a very young age, Ange. So it's a big problem in your family, but, but it's acting out in this relationship. You're going to really struggle to deal with this problem because it's one of those problems that's abusive. And whenever a problem is an abusive problem where you're abusing other people through it, it's, they are some of the hardest things to address because you actually believe you deserve to be treated that way. And that's very, very difficult to address. But, but on the receiving end, Rob, because you, you receive a lot of this, and you notice it playing out a lot, and not doing anything about it, that's your fear. That's your fear and you're not honouring God's truth there. See, that's your resistance to honouring God's truth. And you're using your fear as a justification to not honour the truth. And so your relationship cannot grow while you're doing these things. Closeness can't develop while you're doing these things. While you believe you're superior, no relationship is ever going to develop. And while you accept that... that you know, you don't believe she's superior, but you accept the treatment without any addressing of the truth in this situation, then of course no closeness can develop on your end and you're always going to just want to run away from the relationship. And if you think about how much time you guys spend apart, that's often what happens, right? You don't feel inclined to spend a lot of time together because of these issues. Does that make sense? Is there any questions you'd like to ask? Because I'm happy to ask, ask, answer them. I know it's a bit on the spot, but you have had some time to think yeah. about it. I didn't think I was. I wasn't sure I was going to be up No, there. no, yeah. for Rob, obviously. Yeah. Rob just that's knew right. just now that he was coming up. Yeah, that's okay. Um, but the reason why I wanted you to come up, Rob, is that quite often what I see men doing uh, is they are supporting the codependent addictions of their wife yeah. even when they are conscious that it's actually damaging. Yeah. And I see you being conscious of the damage and yet you're still supporting the codependent addiction. Right. And it doesn't make any logical sense to do that if you ever want to have a close relationship or have a relationship with God. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I justify um, Angie's bad behaviour because I know her family background, you know, I know how, how intense it was. Yeah, pretty to intense. To create her yeah. how she was, how pretty, she is. Yeah. Yep. And when I you, didn't meet her father but I met his mother. Yeah. She was full on, you know. Yeah. Like, yeah. And and even Angie's mum is pretty yeah. full on yeah, with men, pretty, right? I, I can't spend much time with her. Yeah. No. Understandably so. Yeah. yeah. So um, you can see where it all came from. Yeah, and then I justify that, oh, she's working on it, so it's getting slowly better and Yeah, no, but, I don't see it getting better. Mm, that's right. the that's, Do you see it getting better? Yeah, that's that's where I'm a bit um like um I feel divided there. Sometimes I feel, um, you know, like it's so like half of me feels um, that I'm making progress, yeah. but then then I get this whole new vista of um, truth or whatever, and I just go, oh, you yeah, know, obviously not. no, I'm yeah. obviously not. So I just keep getting fooled. Or um, well, you're you're a you're a woman who likes to fool herself mm, about this issue. Mm, I agree. Mm. But also you have some spirits with you who yeah. are in, yeah. infiltrating yeah. your thinking system yeah. because you prefer to believe yes. that you're actually progressing. Yes. Yes. You prefer to believe yes. that you're better than you are. Yes. And they naturally would just be able to say, no, you, you're doing okay, yes. when actually I feel you're yes. doing worse than when I first met you. Oh, definitely. Yeah. 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 And, and you're almost using divine truth as an excuse to do worse. Because you think your understanding of it is better than anyone else's in your family and you basically use it as a manipulative tool to, to manipulate other people into accepting what you conceive as being the, pro the real situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. 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 And that's very dangerous. Yeah, yeah. You keep yeah. going down that road. Yeah, look, that's, I, that's created 
a lot of problems with our children. Yes, yes. and mm. a lot of problems between each yeah. other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And, if, and if it wasn't for Rob also wanting to grow, you you would be having a lot of difficulty. If you were if you were in a partnership with a man who didn't hear or hadn't heard about divine truth yeah. before and wasn't interested, right now you probably wouldn't have a relationship as a result of no. your actions since no. you've heard divine truth. Yeah. So yeah. That, oh no. Yeah. 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 What I've noticed is. Um, when Ange gets in that right place and she sort of says truth, uh, myself and the kids are now getting to sort of, we rebel, you know. We say, of course. You know, yeah. that's not... We all know it's not It's not, not very helpful, you know, so it doesn't happen a lot, but it does happen. Yeah. And, um, yeah. yeah. We all know it's not truth. Yeah. Mm. That's the thing. That's yeah. right. So, you know, there's a feeling in you that it's not truth and you're just hearing the words, but you don't... And because you're not quite... Uh, um, as intellectually clever as Ange is in yeah. manipulating it. And of yeah. course, Ange is getting a lot of spirit help to do be intellectually clever with it. Yeah. Um, you're, you're just bowing out of the conversation. Yeah. So your person, a person who has some courage for truth doesn't do that even when they feel under the spotlight and when they feel they get it wrong. You know? Right. Yeah. They still stand up for truth okay. there. Yep. Yeah. 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 So... To be honest, since I've met you guys, I see Rob has improved in his condition and you've degraded your condition since I've met you. Yeah. Because of the choices that you've made that have been unloving. Now, my suggestion is to look at the talks yesterday in particular as to the reasons why um, you wish to use your will this way. Because what I observe in you, Ange, is a very selfish desire to use your will just for your own gratification. And anything you do for other people is often yes. driven by yeah. personal gratification. Yeah. 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 And if there's no personal gratification, yeah. I have yet to see you yeah. do something that doesn't bring you yeah. personal gratification. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that's yeah. a big issue yes. yeah. if you want to become loving. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, every desire I have is just all about me. Yep, yeah. it's tainted by yeah. things that yeah. you there's want. There's very few pure desires. I agree. Mm. And this is something... So it's good for you to see that, mm. but... but my suggestion now is rather than judging it, because mm. this is one thing that you've had to do mm. in the past, mm. is go, okay, why is this? There's mm. got to be some really big mm. emotions mm. of anger and expectation and demand that you're going to need to go through that you haven't been willing to. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. For you, Rob, it's more about addressing this issue of are you going to be, be focused on the truth every time even if it means that you get a blast, even if it means that someone's angry, even if it means that for days you get the cold shoulder, even if it means there's no sex for weeks or months, even if it means all of these things, are you still going to be in harmony with love and truth? That, that's a question that you need to ask yourself. Okay. So, so where you're using your will is you're, you are afraid in the situation, right? And then you're using your fear, as Corny said, as an excuse to not do what is loving and truthful. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. And that's always going to be damaging you further, but also damage your relationship further. The reality is people can't come together unless truth exists emotionally. And you're not going to be able to express to each other any love unless truth exists emotionally. Because love and truth are, are like completely dependent upon each other. So while you want to believe you're superior, that's not a loving place. So there's not going to be any love felt by the person on the receiving end of that. And while you believe that 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 you can just abscond from truth, you know, get it, do it, you know, <laughs> go away from it, um, that's not loving either. A person who loves somebody else doesn't do that, particularly when it's in a relationship. You don't do that. Does that make sense? Like if I love Mary and I notice her doing something out of harmony with love and if she loves me and she notices some, me doing something out of harmony with love, the right thing to do is to talk to the person about it with love. Right? So, so you'd say, okay, I know you've got this problem, darling, but the reality is it's a pretty severe problem. And you thinking that you're superior and you know everything, that's a big problem. We're not going to get anywhere like that. And it's not drawing me to you. It's not making me feel like, oh, head over heels in love with you. While you think you're superior to me, it makes me feel condescended to, humiliated and so forth. 
you know, and if someone was more honest with you about that, without yelling and screaming, then you have a chance of both of you getting together and working together to find the emotion that's there. But you don't require that of the other person because in the end, you know, it is a personal responsibility to work through every emotion. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. So that's my concern for you guys. Like, I can see that it's really keeping you, your relationship in a stagnant place, um, your happiness is, you know, you, haven't, you don't feel happy. I know you don't feel happy, Ange, and I know Rob's not feeling happy. There are some improvements in other areas of your life, particularly for yourself, Rob. I know you've worked on some areas, other areas of your life. Working at your place, I have to. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so Rob works for me for a couple of days at the moment, a week, and, and basically if he comes... If he comes along in any sort of a mood or anything, then it's addressed. <laughs> on the it's a good experience. It's a good experience, yeah. yeah. Working with yourself and, and Corny and Brendan is just a, it's yeah. a gift. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so that's forced you to address some issues. But the question you need to ask yourself, if you didn't have that external influence, what would you have chosen to do? Would you have done it then? You know? No, I probably would have checked out, yeah. I reckon. Yeah, yeah. So that's an issue for you where you're, you're basically making the choice to not use your will. Yeah. Do, do you see what I'm saying? You're, yeah. you're actually, and this, if you think of one of the things that frustrates Anne's about your relationship, it is your choosing to not use your will frequently. Yeah, definitely. That causes a, a bit of a, from her perspective, some distance from you. Does that make sense? Yeah. To get distance, let's, let's call it rage. You, you, you get angry, yeah, <laughs> which of course is not loving because it, when you get angry, it doesn't, it doesn't help Rob with finding no, the reason, no, no. you see. Like, so, so at this stage, and I, I observe this in most relationships, right? In most relationships, what I observe is that the two people are in a relationship, but they're really enemies. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's been hate. Yeah. <laughs> Let's face yeah. it, I mean, yeah. it's been hate. You yeah, know? Where, and... and and this enemy thing is all about competition. And competition. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and to be honest, while we're in that state, we're not going to feel love with each other, in love with each other. Can you see that? We're just not. It's just going to be competitive and, and angry with each other. And <laughs> this is how most relationships are on earth that I observe. They're in this angry competition with each other, trying to prove the other person's lesser or... <laughs> you know, worse than they are or, or greater than they, you know, prove themselves to be greater. These are things that we need to address, right? And, and you can't address them without changing the way you use your will here. So that's, that's the thing I'd like to think, to mention to both of you. Yeah. Now, the, for yourself, Ange, the next two days in particular, particularly tomorrow, is going to be very helpful. But also today when I talk about the facade self, it's going to be very helpful for you to, to go there. What I'm seeing is most women who are in your same position as yourself, they believe they're processing emotion, but all they're doing is they're actually processing tantrums where they're just, they're just getting what they want. Does that make sense? And this is a problem for most women. They're just having a big tantrum about not getting what they want. And if you think about a lot of your crying, a lot of your crying is about the fact you're not getting what you want. Now, you do need to cry about not getting what you want. That, uh, that, is, that is how to get rid of some of this emotion. But you've got to stop the angry responses and you've got to deal with the emotion that's, that causes you to believe you're superior. Because yeah? uh, if you don't deal with that, there's going to be continually fissures in your relationship, you know, between the two of you. Yeah. How about yourself, Rob? How do you feel? I feel pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know where to go with that? Yeah, I think I hope so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I feel in the last few it's months. It's pretty clear, no? You we've talked about it a few times, haven't yeah, we? Yeah, we have, yeah. And the last few months you've been attempting to do that. A little bit, yeah. Which has meant a few more arguments. Yeah. You but know. And you know. just got a formidable intellect, you know. And like she you has. said, she, if you get some help, I, I can't fight well, with that. I don't yeah, want once to fight she gets some spirit help with her intellect, yeah. 
then the, yeah, yeah, these spirits are manipulating you completely. You know, yeah. like they, they are manipulating you into believing you're right all the time and you're not. You're not right all the time. Yeah. And in fact, at least half the time you're wrong. And, and at the moment it's a bit more than that. <laughs> right? and, and this is the trouble is that you don't believe that. If you're really honest with yourself, you don't believe that. So, so this is where you, you need to start, that you do believe what you do is loving. It was a survival mechanism, you know, to be right. Yes, yeah, I, you know, I'd be very careful going down these lines, Ange. It's not a survival mechanism. You've never had to survive. With a man, you've never had to survive. No, no, not with a man, as a child. Like... Even as a child, you were taught through, from your father that you were superior. See, this is, where, this is where I see people falsifying their emotional state, believing that, you know, that it's one set of emotions when it's completely opposite. Uh, yeah, I, I don't feel like I'm saying that he didn't t tell me I was superior, mm -hmm. but I feel like this, you know, I remember my mother saying to, to me, but he's right, you know, we're all cowering at his rage and anger, and she would say, but he's right, with tears in her eyes, you know. And so I feel like I've just had to be right at all costs. I agree. Yeah. But, but you are not examining at this stage. See, see, what you're trying to do now is you're trying to jump way ahead. Yeah. You're trying to go to the hurt, yes. and, yes. and this yes. is something that yes. you'll learn tomorrow yeah. and today, actually. Yeah. You're trying yeah. to jump into your yeah, hurt, yeah. Yeah when you're not even examining your yeah, facade. Yeah, yeah. You're trying to jump into your hurt and, and, the addiction, and with addiction. rather than actually see all of your addictions that are in play yeah. that is, it actually cause your unloving behaviour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, you, you can't do it that no, way. No, and and yeah. many are trying yes. and of course getting yes, nowhere because yes, yes. you're going to be wrong. Feels, yeah, yeah. You, you're going to be guessing your hurt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And this yeah. is not the real hurt. Yeah. You're yeah, guessing yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Basically, um, just denying one thing to, um, or just apportioning blame somewhere that's well, not yeah, where you're it trying needs to, to apportion it to the, a, a hurt part of yourself yeah, that you believe yeah, is hurt. Yeah, yeah, but by yeah, the time yeah. you get to that place yeah. in your processing, yeah. you might realise that it's got nothing whole, to do with that. Yeah. Nothing. And, and you don't get anywhere anyway. Correct. Yeah. You don't. Because yeah. you're always skipping all yeah. of this unloving behaviour in between. Yes. Yeah. yeah you yeah. need to start yes. with the unloving behaviour. Yes. yes. That's where you need to begin. Yeah. Yeah. yeah rather than trying to skip yeah. over everything and yeah. go down the yeah. track with yeah. it. Yeah. No? So repentance yeah. and remorse. And well, you're not even going to get there first. Because the reality is yeah. you do don't believe you are is. superior. Yeah. yeah. You're not even sorry about that yeah. at this point. I don't even know, know where... It, like where it's situated or what, the well, what facts you, about it. Correct. Mm -hmm. you, you're not even facing intellectually facts yeah. about your yeah. belief. Yeah. See, yeah. From, as you'll see today, intellectual awareness is your first step and you're not even there yeah. because you're not intellectually facing that actually yeah. the belief that you're superior to yeah. other people yeah. is a sin. Yes, okay. And you're not even seeing it as a sin. No. So, so you're not even at that yeah. stage yet. Yeah. Yeah. So that's where you need to begin. Yes. So forget yes. about trying to process yes. some hurt yeah. because at the end of yeah. the day, that hurts a long way down the track. Yeah, yeah. You, you need to first yeah. see and yeah. your justification of your unloving behaviour yeah. and the fact and come to even some intellectual awareness that, that the actual thing that you're doing, feeling superior, is a sin yes. in itself. Yes. Like, like yeah, I don't you, have to do anything. Just it's sitting still, here yeah. thinking you're superior is yes. a sin. Yes. <laughs> Doesn't yeah. make sense. Yeah. It automatically denigrates the people around you yeah. in preference yeah. to yourself. Yeah. And God certainly, and, and it's yeah. out of harmony with love, yeah. just that feeling. Yes. And, and you do not see that no. at this stage because yeah. you keep on going for that feeling. You yeah. want that feeling. Yeah. You want that yeah. feeling. Yeah. So, so it's not until you start to actually really see that yeah. that you're going to make any real change here. Yeah. So you can think that it's all to do with daddy doing something or mummy doing yes. something yeah. and all these kind of things. Yeah, no, it's my choice. It's, well. Yeah, but you see, even in this discussion, you're not getting that actually you are not intellectually aware even yeah. of this sin. You're not intellectually yeah. even aware of it. I feel like it's... You're saying yes to me, but you're yeah. not, you're not yeah. aware of it. Because yeah. if you were aware of it, you'd have the first 
process in repentance and you haven't engaged that because you still keep doing it. You can still keep treating yes. your husband and other yes. people around you yes. as if they are yes. inferior yes. to yourself. Yes. So, so what I'm feeling here is I can, I can, um, I can agree with what you're saying. I can see. I can feel. I can. What? What am I? No. This is a habit you've learnt with your dad. Right. All you're acting out with me now yeah. is a habit you've learnt with your dad. Yes. Which is, if you agree with him, you'll yeah. get off. Yeah. It's manipulative. Okay. And it's a desire to retain power. That's all you're doing. It's another addiction that you're engaging in your effort to feel superior. That's all you're doing. And you don't even see that. <sighs> this is a tool. It's like many women use crying as a tool mm. to manipulate a man. They use this thing as a tool. You go, oh, yes, yes, I understand what you're saying. Yes, yes, yes. And there's this, almost this panic feeling behind that if you think about it and feel it. You can feel it. Why isn't, he, why isn't he acknowledging that I'm getting what he's saying, right? And the reality is you don't get what I'm saying. I'm telling you quite clearly you don't. And, and, and the reality also is that you want to use that as a tool to manipulate me to stop me from talking about it more. And you do this frequently in this relationship. You use, I understand what you're saying, as a way of just cutting off the entire conversation. All right? This is a common tool that many women have learnt to use in order to avoid a deeper conflict internally. Right? It's a common tool. And crying is a common tool that many women have also learnt to manipulate so that they can stop having the conversation they don't want to have. So you've got to be careful. So this is what I'm saying. If you start where you are, the next step you'll get is all the facade-based things and all the addiction-based things you do to maintain this position. And, and I'm, I've just listed two of them. Right? One of them is this thing. Of, I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. Right? When you don't. Because if you got it, if you really got it, you would have changed by now. You would be doing something completely different. So you don't get it. But you're telling me you get it so that we don't have a further conversation. It's, you're far better off going, you're far better off going, actually, yeah, I've got to start where I... And this is, see, if you were in the spirit world, what would happen is they'd only tell you one thing. You know what that would... You're arrogant. Mm -hmm. I can't spend any more time with you until you work through that. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's all you'd get. Okay. Uh, and you don't believe you're arrogant, so that's going to be a problem. So if somebody's told you you're arrogant and you don't believe it, you've already got a problem, right? <laughs> right? And, and that's all they'd do. And they'd wait until you came to an awareness that actually, a feeling-based awareness that, wow, I am actually. Mm. Then they'd be able to show you, what have you done in your arrogance? What have you done? Well, there's a whole heap of things you've done in your arrogance to harm other people. Just the feeling of being arrogant harms other people. Every, every single person you interact with feels mm. that you feel you're superior and mm. so therefore you're automatically feeling they're inferior and therefore mm. <laughs> they already feel harmed, right? So there's all, automatically that's happening. Right? So, but you're not aware of that, you see. See, that unless you become aware of the starting point, you're not going to be able to follow the rabbit down the hole, oh. as the saying goes. Right? You're not going to be able to do that. Mm. What you're trying to do is you're trying to presume or assume that it's a whole heap of other things mm. when it's actually not. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah. And that's a problem. And many people do exactly the same as you, by the way. So, so I don't think you're alone with the problem. <laughs> but it's a big, it's a common problem. Yeah. yeah. Do you see what I'm saying? See, no, is, I don't see what you're saying. No, no, that's right. I mean, you know, I feel like I do, but I feel like I do to a degree. Yeah, and this is a big issue for you because you keep saying those words and it's a habit you've gotten into to say yeah. you no know yeah. when you don't, yeah. when you're not acting yeah. any differently, yeah. so yes. you don't know. Yes. You don't yeah. know. Yeah, yeah no, yeah. I can see that I don't know. Yeah. 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 And, you know, you're so used to your dad feeding yeah. you feelings of yeah. superiority yeah. Yeah. that you've become addicted yeah. to proving yeah. your superiority yeah. in yeah. every interaction. Yeah. And one of the ways you, you prove it is by saying to yourself that you understand and get what's going on. Yeah. And you don't. Yeah. If you did, 
if you really got what was going on with your arrogance, you'd want to stop it immediately. You, you, you wouldn't have done the last year of what you've done. You wouldn't, because you would have gotten it here, you know, solid in your heart. You would have gone, wow, this is a big problem. You don't see it as a big problem. In fact, no. if anything, yeah. as you'll see tomorrow, you see it as an essential Asset. part of your own view of yourself. Mm. So you don't even see it as a big problem at this stage. Mm. So I think mm. the best thing to do is leave it there. You don't have to, you know, you don't have to falsify to me yeah. where you're at with it, even though you'd like to do that with Daddy. <laughs> Does that make sense? You don't have to do that with me. I know where you're at with it. And what I'm going to suggest to you is don't judge it. You, you know where all this has come from, right? The key now is do you want to use your will to deconstruct it? And, and today we'll go through some things that will help you do that. Yeah. Make sense? Good day. And the, you got any more questions, Rob? Oh, I'm pretty right. I think pretty right. right? Yeah. No worries. Thank you. Yep. Thanks yep. for your time, guys.